Next is from Lewis Rice, and the subject is Stranded on an Island. Next is from Subject on an Island. Which music do you pick? Disco and Conan, I know you're both big music guys. If you're banished to an island, you can only bring along a music catalog for three artists. Who would those artists be? Huh. Lewis Rice. Uh, Led Zeppelin. Um, ACDC. And probably you 2 would be my choices. What about you? What's yours, Joe? Uh, Guns N' Roses, The Doors, and The Rolling Stones. Guns N' Roses? Mm-hmm. It's not a lot of music. It never gets old to me. Right. <laughs> what about you, Conan? I don't know. That's such Plus, a I'll, tough I'll, one. I'll go to MSL if I want to get any elite songs that haven't come out, you know? Uh, next is from Adam Ortiz. You can't you know, have Cody. You can't think of three. Have an answer? Of your, of well, if I had to think of three, and because I would need a long time to think of it, because I like so many people, I'm just gonna say off the top of my head: top Earth, of Earth, Wind, and Fire. Uh, maybe Public Enemy, Prince. Uh, maybe Prince. Yeah. All right. Next is from Adam Ortiz, and the subject is Four Live Crew. Adam from Boston. Hey, Conan, Disco, and Joe, my question is for Conan. Just finished watching a video on YouTube about the three live crew in TNA. The video was created by Marky D, if anyone's interested. Mm-hmm. And then I learned that Billy Gunn joined the group uh, to form the four live crew, but you guys weren't together for that long. And about a week or so later, when you hit Billy and Road Dog over the head with a chair in the middle of an eight-man tag match against Team Canada. My question is, why did it end so quickly? It looked like you were all really over. It hadn't even scratched the surface yet with what you four could have done. Thank you for all your t- all for your time. Love the show. Conan, stay strong and stay healthy and keep up the good spirits. Oh, and KG. Well, what happened there is Dusty Rhodes was the booker, and I guess he thought that it would be better just to keep Road Dog and Billy Gunn together because of their DX days, you know? And Jeff Jarrett went along with it. And I remember we were in a hotel room, and we were like, okay, so what are you going to do with us? Because obviously BG and this guy are going to make a group, and they're going to Go, what, what are you going to do with me? And, uh, and I remember that Ronnie wanted to ha- tag with Jeff Hardy because they were boys as a shoot. And Jeff was like, no, 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 no. Then I said, all right, then put me and Ronnie together. And we'll, he goes, no, 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 no. I don't want to put I go, why not? What's mm-hmm. the big deal? And uh, and that's when I came up with the LAX concept, which was also not an easy sell. Well, the uh, Adam there's with KG. We can, uh, I can provide an update on us discussing KG and GCW last week. And from what I understand and heard, he stopped showing up with no, with no word or warning. That's just, just the, like, what, the what, where have we seen that before? That's what somebody said to me. Did the same thing to you guys, right? Which I find <laughs> that very strange. I would, you know. Well, it's not very. That's strange. how snowflakes handle They don't confront, they attack on social media, and then they don't right. want to have civil discourse. You can never talk to them face to face, man to man. But he seemed like he was a major part over there and a big part of their DNA and all that. I'm just surprised. I don't know what happened, but it surprises me. Because like he did in ICP, like he did here, he gets exposed for being the fraud that he is. So, sorry so. that I, I'm still burying the guy, but, you know, hey, he was supposed to be a big integral part of ICP, whoop-de-whoop, and he had the chain, and he ran one of their – and he was a booker for them, and he ran one of their podcasts, and – they ended up getting rid of him and not talking good about him on his way out either. Right. Uh, yeah. Next is, uh, this is interesting. Uh, the subject is Escobar and Ray exchange masks. Uh, how long is this clip, Joe? Uh, let me, let me <clears throat> watch this. As, uh, salutations to the superior one, the great KO double G and the it's man serious. that should have been voted as the entrepreneur of the year in Philadelphia Chronicle for outstanding podcasting, mm-hmm. Jojo Feeney, the third Philadelphia Chronicle. That's prestigious. Compliments for Disco. Timeout is still the only reason to subscribe to Russo's Patreon, especially after the atrocious show we started called Hey Mom doing a TV show in the basement, which is essentially a ripoff of Durbin and Hughie's not-so-popular YouTube show that shall not be named. Huh. Um, Disco's recent castigation, which is, which is a tremendous word for Canadian wrestling mark who lives in his mom's basement to use while writing into a podcast, of Sean Sapp, proves that Disco still has got it like that. Question. Have you guys seen the clip of Escobar and Ray exchanging masks backstage? I've attached a link below. I know Disco doesn't like Lucha content over the one minute mark, but it's definitely great, good video to watch. What are your thoughts on it? But let's play it, Joe. Okay. Ever since I was a little kid, pulling up with my dad, 
and we saw you. And he said to me, you see him? That's Rey Mysterio. He's going to do big things in this business. I guess, I guess that hit me. Because when the time came for me to be here, all I ever wanted was to take your legacy and make it mine. Because, hey, after all, my dad wasn't wrong. He did a lot of things and still do. But after tonight, I can only accept and respect that Ray is all about Lucha. And I guess in honor to my dad, who didn't raise a champion, but he raised a lion. I must present you with the ultimate sign of respect. This doesn't mean I don't want your legacy. But hell, I do respect what you are. I remember he told me that story one time, a long time ago when we first met. And I cherish that story in my heart. And you know what this means. This is sacred. This is special. This is something that is not to be messed around with. I respect that. And just as you presented me with something so sacred, I want to do the same. I want to present you with something that will bring out that ferociousness within that line, within your heart. And hoping that this will let you create your own legacy. Respeto, admiración, el futuro de la lucha. What did you think of that? I thought that was incredible. That was great. And that just shows, you know, when you know how to act, you're going to get over. And that was great job by Phantasma. And let me tell you a story about Phantasma because I have so much love. Obviously, everybody knows my, my history with Ray. So he's my brother. But Phantasma, his dad had called me a year before he came into AAA. And he was like, hey, they're not doing nothing with him in Arena, Mexico. Will you talk to him? Because he's kind of down. So we were going back and forth and back and forth, and I finally got him to, to come to AAA. And the first day he was there, I had him cut a promo in the ring, and he was absolutely terrible because they don't really do promos over there in Arena, Mexico. So I worked with him on his promos. He became my number one heel. He became my champ, and um, uh, he was also out of shape. And I go, bro, if you want me to push you as a top heel, you need to get in shape. And he got into incredible shape. You know, so he was a guy that I could see by his discipline, by how fast he learned, by when I told him to get in shape, he didn't give me excuses. He did it, you know, and he was easy to deal with. He was easy to work with. And back then I already knew he was going to be a star. So it's I'm so happy to see his growth, you know, and I'm so happy he's doing something with Ray because he does like every luchador, you know, raise a God to them. So he does respect Ray a lot. Yeah, I, I remember I... So I brought this thing. I don't know if maybe they, they listened to, to the podcast. Remember when I, I, I approached this this possible angle the other day where I said, that wouldn't it be kind of cool because the cartels are bad guys. Right. You know, they're just drug deals. Like, and then their gimmick is kind of like, like these are cartel guys, right? The, the Fantasmo and the, the – the, the... Right. Legato. He froze for a second. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Yep. Okay. So I, I brought this up as a, as a possible angle. It's like when you read about the cartels, it's like if you want to do character development with those guys, okay, like, okay, they're Mexicans. 
They're kind of like you know, like you see the gimmicks of them, like they're 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 in the bar, they're drinking drinks. He's got the girl, you know, they're, they're cartel guys, right? Which are heels, but the cartel guys still kind of like kind of respect Mexican culture, like they have respect for elders and stuff. At the end, you know, you've heard them like like when we talked about the when you know K one hundred talks about the cartels are said telling like people, hey, don't, don't go after the priests anymore, don't go after the like like you said, there's like certain people in touch. I think this is a good angle and you could do good long-term storytelling here where like, where, you know, Ray's a baby face will always be a baby face, but he's still a Mexican and you got the Mexican heels that still kind of respect Ray because he's a Mexican legend, but they don't really like any of the other baby faces. Like, and you could do some good storytelling, like, like that, that vignette that we just saw right there where like they're having conversations and like, you know, like, Ray maybe is trying to get these guys to like change their ways and stuff and all that, but like you know, but they're just still bad guys. I you have know, a they're, feeling they're turning these guys' face, or they already have. And right? I have a feeling, I have a feeling. There's nothing Ray's told me that they're gonna put them together somehow. Right. Yeah. And they could turn and they, that that could be the big blow off. You know, I, I don't know because like I said that they're bro like like Ray is going in this thing with Dom. Ray right. has no allies. They got the whole freaking Judgment Day. Like you can absolutely mm-hmm. see, like some, some like you know, where, where right, the, the cartel Legato guys coming are going, out to the quit. Abs- abs- hundred percent, right. absolutely. Yeah. It's a good, and you're telling why and why would he do that? This is a perfect example why he would do that. That vignette right there, you know, so that's right. good, that's good stuff, you know. Right. Um, next is from. Oh, whoops! I'm on the wrong page. Okay, next is from. <clears throat> And it just shows you too to tell all these Mexican wrestlers, bro, learn to speak English. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because that worked because Fantasma speaks good English, you know? Right. So 